Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF News video. We got a whole bunch of crazy stuff to talk about today. A whole bunch of brand new merchandise reveals from Funko and U2s. Some updates on the upcoming FNAF movie, including a very special YouTuber cameo that might be making an appearance, as well as a brand new Reddit post from Scott Cawthon himself. So let's not waste any more time. If you're brand new, consider scrolling down, tickling that sub button so you stay up to date with everything going on in the FNAF franchise. So to kick off this video, let's Let's take a look at a few upcoming merchandise specifically from Hot Topic. First up, we've got yet another backpack themed around Glamrock Freddy from Security Breach. This one taking on the appearance of his face. It looks pretty goofy, but also looks pretty cute at the same time. It's got, of course, Freddy's face on it. The top hat, the ears are plastered on it seems. You've got the Security Breach logo on the zipper and on the backpack itself. Also, some more SB merch from Hot Topic. We've got a brand new glow-in-the-dark Security Breach Glamrock shirt featuring Freddy, Chica, Monty, Roxanne. Like I said, it glows in the dark. For some reason, it's got Five Nights at Freddy's across the front. Don't know why they always themed, they always find the need to throw in FNAF on it. But those are just a few products coming out of Hot Topic recently. Next up, we got some brand new plush keychains from Just Toys. Also themed around Security Breach, you've got blind bags featuring Glamrock Chica, Roxy, Monty, Freddy, Vanny, and Sun and Moon. <laughs> Once again, these guys look a little goofy, but you kind of love them for that. These guys were found at a Just Toys convention earlier this year and now they have a listing on Just Toys' website, so hopefully these guys should be officially releasing pretty soon. Moving on now to Hex, they got a whole bunch of news because Daco actually uploaded a dedicated video just for Hex news, so let's go through it right now. First up, we got a teaser for their upcoming puppet plushie with Daco featuring a full reveal of the design in one of his recent videos and also over on Twitter providing a higher resolution image for that reveal. What's fascinating about this puppet plush is that she's going to feature not only magnets, but also bendable limbs that you can pose together. And she's also going to glow in the dark. Just a bit of a nice added touch there from Daco and the Hex team. As for release, all we know is that Daco was originally planning on launching the puppet alongside Mangle and Withered Golden Freddy in a wave after the Withers, which is wave four. There's been a bit of backlash on the puppet's design, mainly her face, but don't worry, this is still only a prototype. It's definitely gonna change before release. Daco showed off a bit more of the limited edition sitting golden Bonnie plushie that's released very soon and because it is a special golden limited edition it's also going to come with a special golden limited edition card and bag in Daco's video he showed off a bit more of the prototype for their mangle plushie they're still working hard on it but of course it is a very complex design so it's taken a while when the mangle does release apparently it's going to be included with a support stand so you can properly display them we got brand new photos of the upcoming withered plushies withered chica and withered freddy now, as you can see from the photos they're going to feature a whole bunch of wires around their bodies, especially Chica, because well, she's got wires for hands, basically. We got a small teaser of the concept art for the upcoming Springtrap Hex plushie. And as for the future of Hex, Daco mentioned a few products he'd like to do in the future. Mainly sitting plushies for Fredbear and Spring Bonnie, the plush keychains for the FNAF 1 gang, as well as more stylish hoodies similar to the Kai one they did with their default Hex brand. Specifically, Daco showed a lot of interest in making a Shadow Bonnie hoodie. So a whole bunch of stuff coming out from Hex, and now let's move on to U2s. First up, we got U2's teasing that a FNAF jigsaw puzzle might be coming out soon, with U2's responding to merchandise reviewing springs, saying, I wish there were some good official FNAF puzzles that I could do and get framed. I think that would be fun to have in the room. U2's replying with a shushing emoji. U2's has done a whole bunch of puzzles in the past. In fact, this is one of their more recent ones themed around Cuphead. Lastly, for U2's, we got Kane Carter showing off the prototype for the upcoming sitting Pop Goes plushie. This is an edit Kane made for what he hopes the final version of the plushie will look like. He looks absolutely adorable. I cannot wait for this guy to release. Apparently, he's releasing alongside uh, sitting plushies of Candy and Ignited Freddy as well, so we got those to look forward to. Moving on now to Funko. Oh boy, we got a whole bunch of Funko stuff to talk about. First up, we got an update on their upcoming holiday wave of FNAF products releasing later this year. Because Scarlet Joker announced the themes for each of the characters, we got Santa Freddy, Elf Bonnie, Snow Chica, and Gingerbread Foxy. So some very festive themes for the 
these guys and as you can see in the image this wave will include pops plushies and action figures next up we got some very strange news that Funko has been releasing the recently released uh, balloon circus minis as non mystery minis just regular minis people have mainly been finding these guys at five below locations and on the back you can see which characters are included in this non mystery mini wave mostly it just seems to be the commons the balloon and the circus versions of the characters no Walmart exclusives no like one in 72 rares so yeah certainly very interesting I guess if you're on the lookout for the minis and you don't really feel like opening up a whole bunch of blind bags to find the character you want there you go next up for Funko we got our first look at their upcoming firework Freddy action figure exclusive to Walmart quite frankly I've seen a lot of praise for this figure mainly because they finally got rid of those top teeth again though they did miss out on his freckles which is weird but anyways this is a fantastic figure he's got a whole bunch of details on him the firework comes included that looks amazing as well and as a matter of fact look who came in the other day <laughs> It's Firewalk Freddy! Yeah, this is the Firewalk Freddy plushie, if you've not seen it before. It is also exclusive to Walmart. Quite frankly, an amazing plushie. Uh, also, as you can see right down there, I finally got this guy, the Tie-Dye Springtrap plushie. For the longest time, feels like this guy wasn't releasing here in the States. He's also exclusive to Walmart, so yeah, if you've been on the lookout for this guy, he should start showing up here in the States. Lastly, for Funko, we got the news that they're releasing three brand new Security Breach characters as action figures. Though the first one we're going to talk about is definitely not someone you'd expect. We got Photo Negative Glamrock Freddy. He's going to be exclusive to Funko's online website, and if you can't tell what exactly Photo Negative means, well, here's a regular photo of Glamrock Freddy. Invert the colors real quick. There you go, Photo Negative Glamrock Freddy. Why Funko felt the need to make this a, a dedicated action figure? I have no clue, but I think the figures most people are excited for that we just got recently revealed to us are the sun and moon daycare attendant action figures. Their plushies got revealed not that long ago and people absolutely fell in love with those guys, so we were praying that when the figures got revealed they'd be equally as good, and thankfully they are. This is what the sun and moon figures look like, and my gosh Funko, you're knocking it out of the park with these guys. A whole bunch of detail, the paint jobs look absolutely amazing, hopefully they look just as good in real life it looks like they practically took all the detail from the models in game and just pulled them out they ripped them out of the game just threw them onto an action figure they look absolutely fantastic i've seen a few people critique the eyes and how it looks like they're looking in different directions but honestly if that's the only critique Funko you've outdone yourself. I genuinely think these might be one of Funko's best figures they've ever made for FNAF. Just super accurate to what the characters look like. A whole bunch of detail like I said. The paint looks amazing. Seems like these guys as well as their plushy variants going to be releasing sometime this upcoming summer. I'd love to know in the comments what do you think of these brand new Sun and Moon products. I know for a lot of people these were some of their most anticipated merchandise products. So I'd love to know have they lived up to the hype. What do you think about them? That's going to do it for all the merchandise news. So now let's move on to the books. First up, we got the most commonly used words and phrases in the upcoming seventh Tales from the Pizza Plex book, Tiger Rock. I don't usually report on these anymore because what the hell am I supposed to point out? Ooh, they say jello. Though the book is set to come out next month on July 4th, so stay on the lookout for that. Next up, we've got a preview for B72, the eighth Tales book, which on first look doesn't seem all that weird but then you consider the fact that we don't even have a synopsis description for the book yet so we've gotten a six page preview of the book before we even know the basic synopsis of the three stories included it's a little strange but nonetheless we got that book to look forward to it releases later this year on the 3rd of october now we move on to some pretty jolly news because recently on may 28th was actually the four year anniversary of fnaf vr help wanted in celebration steel wool as tradition posted a brand new illustration celebrating its four year anniversary you've now got four candles on the cupcake at any point now i'm sure poor carl's just gonna melt in mangle's hand for the longest time i've wanted to go back into the world of FNAF AR and revisit it for a video and now it seems like the best time to do that with Help Wanted 2 being announced with the anniversary happening past couple of days so definitely stay on the lookout for that video very soon because I definitely want to explore it once again I freaking love Help Wanted and actually while we're on the topic of anniversaries and birthdays it was actually Scott's birthday the other day on June 4th there's been a lot of confusion on when his birthday actually is June 4th is our best guess right now but anyway Scott made a very sweet post to the FNAF subreddit thanking everyone for the birthday wishes even though he claims his birthday is on February 31st which by the way for the people legitimately thinking that's his birth date 
I'd recommend looking at a February calendar. <laughs> but interestingly enough, and as a clean segue to the next topic, at the end of the post he says, I got to see the first rough cut of the movie a couple days ago, and I think it came together in an amazing way. Very excited for you all to see it in October, smiley face. So confirmation from the man himself, the first rough cut of the FNAF movie is done. Of course, that doesn't mean the movie is completely done. There's still a lot of progress to be made on it, hence why it's called a rough cut. But hopefully pretty soon, this means we can get maybe a new teaser, maybe another trailer in the next coming months. And actually, speaking of teaser trailers for the movie, the Portuguese subtitled version of the teaser trailer was uploaded not too long ago. And actually, interestingly enough, people noticed on the Portuguese version of the official poster, there was a subtitle for the film that roughly translates to The Endless Nightmare or The Never-Ending Nightmare. Now, it's very likely the subtitle will just be used in select regions of the world, but it's still pretty interesting, don't you think? For the final topic, at today's video we got some subtle hints that Markiplier might be making a cameo in the upcoming film. Now I'd absolutely stop making these claims if every time Markiplier was asked about the FNAF movie he didn't coyly put his hands behind his back and do a little mm, I might be in it. I'm all for leaving the man alone but whenever he gets asked something about the movie he said stuff like this. FNAF bro you gotta say something about that. I don't know how to explain this to you uh, that uh, number one I can't and number one I, I won't. Um, because it's like, what, what would be the joy in that? Well, what would be the goodness in that? I mean, sure, you all could, uh, run away and tell everybody and then you could be the one that knows. But what's, what's the point of that? Look, I don't even spoil my own projects. Like, it's, it's not something that I would ever talk about. FNAF movie trailer, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Don't know what you're talking about, pal. Don't know what you're talking about. Never heard of you. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm calling security. <clears throat> calling security on you if you show your face around here ever again. That was on a recent live stream a couple days ago where he said he can't and won't share anything about FNAF, saying, look, I don't even spoil my own projects. It's not something that I would ever talk about. It would just ruin the fun, you know? Like, come on, Markiplier. You can open up to us. If you got something to say, you can you can tell us, man. Also, during this stream, he live reacted to the trailers for Ruin and Help Wanted 2, and it seems like he didn't even know those projects existed, so what other project could he be talking about that he doesn't want to spoil, you know? So I'd love to know your thoughts and theories. What do you think's going on with Markiplier? Do you think he's just playing this community for a fool? Or do you think there's legitimately something about FNAF that he can't talk about? Well, that's gonna do it for this FNAF News video once again. Huge shout out to you guys for watching through the whole way. This was a massive FNAF news video and there's still a whole bunch more FNAF coming out later this year, so definitely stay tuned. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.